I think we're starting officially. Good to go. Okay, great. Um, thank you, Danny, for coming here. Thank you, everyone, uh, for coming to listen to this chat. Uh, we only have 20 minutes, so normally I'd go into your very storied career, but I'm sure everyone here knows who you are um, and knows the intersections of all of the industries that you've worked in. But now you're almost in an entirely different industry. You're working in the education sphere. And uh, effectively what you're working on now is iterating on the game design program at USC. Uh, and you're working on a lot right now. You're working on integrating esports in a kind of you know, cultural way at the university. You're looking at expanding disciplines in the program. Um, you're, you're working towards greater and greater diversity. Uh, and you're really focused on job placement, which, which I find fascinating. But uh, we cheated a little bit, and we had a phone conversation uh, before this panel. And one of the subjects that I found most interesting was that a part of your curriculum that you're working towards is you're really prioritizing things like mobile game development, games as a service, stuff that's really trending in the industry as far as development goes. Right. Well, we have to keep up with the industry. We had a, a wonderful program that has been number one in the Princeton Review for years. But you can't really sit on anything in the game business. It's just like every other aspect of the game business. You have to constantly be iterating. So over the last couple of years, and I've been chair for two years, we've all been looking at where we need to sort of, you know, upgrade might be the wrong word, but maybe update update the program. And one of the areas is uh, free-to-play mobile. We also, um, a bunch of the faculty work with Tencent in the summers in training programs for them. So we've been exposed to sort of their numbers and their games and how things work and, and we see the trends here. I think one of the most important things for the faculty is to play games. I used to say that about when I was a game industry executive, was one of the most important things for an executive was to play games. It's the same. Um, from being the consumer, you understand the consumer's point of view of a game, and you have to deliver to that. So I always, even when I was a, an executive in the game business, I always said we work for the consumer, and now we teach the students that they're designing for the consumer. And you always have to understand that. But to best understand it, you have to be it. So um, I think by playing games, and you can't avoid understanding what's going on in the industry, especially around free-to-play and the intersection we see approaching really quickly of free-to-play and AAA. So with that, our students need to be trained in live ops. And that's what we're trying to get to over the next year, is ideally have our students, while they're in school, running a live game and learning how to create events and learning how to manage data and be creative with that data and inspiring with it. So that's one area mm -hmm. that we absolutely have to update because until Zynga uh, did some investment two years ago, we really had nothing in uh, free-to-play mobile at all. You specifically mentioned you know, the word and emphasis on being creative still, and the USC Games program is associated with the film school program as well. Uh, and I, I find that interesting, like when you're focusing on storytelling and you know you come from a screenwriting background, you're still doing the same amount of work. Um, how do you balance the two? Like, are those goals at odds with one another, do you feel? I mean, the, the sense of creating, because when we spoke over the phone, you mentioned that you want to make sure that you, you know, the students are being trained towards creating a hit. And does that hit when you're focused on these game development constructs? Does that conflict at all with the idea of like creative storytelling? No, not at all. I think there's a couple of things that, that we teach across uh, USC School of Cinematic Arts. And the number one thing in all entertainment is why are people gonna care about it? Um, with games, I like to say, you know, story's only one thing to care about. Uh, progression and objectives and reward systems tend to be really, uh, in my opinion, even more important than story, and story can support them. But we, but applying story, IP development, how you present a story or, or a, a, a property to an audience through marketing, through creative marketing, all that is part of um, what we teach. But the, but the secret things, like in my opinion, are why will they care and is it surprising? And that has to kind of happen beat for beat, whether it's a television show, a movie, a game, a comic book, any of the narrative arts. I think finding the reason the user is going to care is the most important thing. So um, we absolutely have to teach the skills of game development, which involve, you know, we just merged into one big school of USC games, which is our engineering school at Viterbi as well as the film school. Um, we merge together because you don't make games without engineers and you don't make games without designers and producers. And, and one of the reasons was we wanted to make sure everyone was getting all the creative classes. 
because we can teach the basic skill sets of how to put a game together, which, by the way, is incredibly difficult. Everybody here knows that. But how to do it well, and when I say make a hit, you know, that's figurative. Nobody knows a formula for making hits, but there are things to understand about the user and the user in time, meaning, like, where is our user today versus where were they yesterday versus thinking about where they might be tomorrow. The secret to all of that is participating yourself and understanding what you like. Um, I'll give you an example that um, I started as a screenwriter, and I had really one teacher. His name is John Milius, who was also happened to be an SC graduate. But he gave me something really important. Write the movie you want to see the most. And I say to the students, design the game you want to play the most. Because that's where the inspiration comes from. If I had control over this piece uh, or this product, what would I do with it? I mean, I think that's the strength of any creator. And we're teaching our students to be creators, to deal with what I call the blank page, whether you're an engineer or a designer or a producer or anything. We're always dealing with the blank page. Yeah, you mentioned to me um, that you can't monetize if people don't care. And it's interesting because from a media perspective, it's the same thing. I'm constantly telling my writers and editors the stories that you're talking about in the office, that you're out at a bar to telling your friends about, that's what you should be writing about. Because if you care, inevitably other people will care as well. Well, it, and it really applies to the magic of game or interactive narrative. Because I believe the interactive stories that are the most important are the ones the players tell each other mm -hmm. after the experience. Yeah, we talked about emergent narrative. Yeah, emergent is, is mm -hmm. really powerful. Mm -hmm. Anything that's participatory, I think, is much more powerful than what the writer's script. Mm -hmm. And we also, uh, kind of along the lines of emergent narrative, I mean, talking about storytelling could be those player experiences, just like we've seen with Fortnite or Apex Legends, like the system, and obviously the progression is there in terms of some kind of player feedback, but uh, what's more interesting are the stories that the community is creating within themselves, and you know, Epic's done a really good job of uh, kind of monopolizing on that and, and creating a, a scenario for gamers to... It really doesn't happen by accident. Yeah. I mean, that's the incredible thing of narrative design, as opposed, mm -hmm. it's very different than linear story writing. Narrative design, we all know this, can be just about progression rewards, the verbs, the mechanics, what goes on, and then the stories the players tell each other afterwards. I, I've always, you know, even though I'm a traditional linear writer also, when it comes to games, it, for me, it's always about the stories we tell each other after. So how do you teach that um, in the classroom? How do you balance the two between uh, these like games as a service models, these mobile game design uh, tenants alongside the storytelling, whether that be more of an emergent community kind of perspective or the linear? Well, we'll use that as an example, what you just said. So if we get our, if our students are developing events for a live game, for a mobile game, that's all creative. You look at the data, and what we've learned, of course, is that data is only backwards looking. And if, for instance, in, I'll use an old example. If they're buying a lot of pumpkins in Farmville, that doesn't mean make more pumpkins, mm -hmm. right? It means if they like that, what are they going to be inspired to do? So when you're just programming events or designing events, that's creative writing to me, right? Because you use the narrative aspects of the game. Usually, I mean, an event can be just triple gold today. But I think what's more important in getting people to care about it is you create events around characters or story or something that may appear to move that story that matters that people will gather around and you push that out to players so they're all there on Thursday at 9. So it's basically using those progression mechanics to tell a story, hopefully, effectively. Right. You know, one of the... I, I, I was brought into the game business from the film business by some senior people at Electronic Arts many years ago. And I, one of them who'd been in the business since the beginning said, games are about telling stories through objectives and rewards. And that really has always stuck with me and I sort of teach that and try to build some process around that. Um, the other thing about us that's really interesting is I'm also in the screenwriting department. So around storytelling at USC, we have 60 faculty storytellers. And we, we have classes where the, the writers come to the game classes and the game students go to the writing classes. By the way, if I'm here to talk about the future of education, it's all about cross-discipline. Mm -hmm. So us merging with engineering is probably the deepest one at USC and probably one of the deepest in the states right now because of our business. It's organic, right, for us to merge with engineers. But there's also cross-discipline with theater, for instance, a lot. Um, and fine art, architecture, um, all of those design aspects uh, come into play. So the future of education, and I'm sounding professional because I've been at this for at least two years now, 
Uh, not true. I've been actually teaching about 15 part-time, but really seriously two years. But what I'm learning from those who, who do this professionally is that the future is about keeping our, our students really agile. And the future is, is I've heard them say they're going to have four to six careers in their lifetimes. Now, I don't know. But, but people say that at school at, when they're making big talks about this stuff. But what I do know across the country is cross-discipline education is the key so that they have enough skills to invent. Yeah, absolutely. And especially, you know, it's kind of fortuitous that the USC Games program is a part of the film school because of the fact that game developers are constantly told, draw from your experiences, draw from art of any variety. And you mentioned architecture, you mentioned theater. And you're part of what you're incorporating into this new, like, Games 2.0 uh, kind of program at USC has a lot to do with theater. And we talked a lot about um, events-based, theme-based, uh, kind of projects that developer that you know soon to be developers would be working on um, as students. Can you talk more about yeah, that? Yeah, well, as a research university, I think it's our responsibility to look at new forms of interactive entertainment. So we do have some partners. I personally was on the early design team for uh, Galaxy's Edge for Star Wars, where we ran some tests in Frontierland that were around live action role playing. Mm -hmm. So we now have some partners, and we're re going to be going to some work in some research labs around the, the intersection of LARPing, 3D projection, phones as an interface, and sort of getting into, I like to think, what's going to happen to all these big box stores that are empty? And maybe we're going to have a new kind of um, storytelling. Mm -hmm. I, it's really hard to talk about it because there's no nomenclature for this. You know, because LARP is a terrible word, and <laughs> it's beyond that. I think it will be invented. There's a lot of money and, and some big companies coming at this. But SC Games is going to be on the forefront of gaming this kind of uh, live-action entertainment, which also involves actors and costumes. So it's a blending of digital and analog. And then there's this other aspect, too, where you're really driving towards conversations that um, people are having in the development community at large. So there's a lot of conversations around analyzing you know, what is our work process like? Are we, are we like driving towards something that's a healthy process? Conversations around crunch and unionization, and these are obviously topical and things where students will be entering into that world. So can you tell me about Right, well they experience production for themselves at school. So all of those issues are very organic, except the, the ideas of crunch and unionization are not so prevalent because college students for 100 years have crammed for tests. So crunching is part of their normal routine. However, the way we're addressing it is not to so talk about crunch so much, but what we started this year is talking about professional production process, which is really around measuring a team's velocity and managing scope. Professionals all know this, understand it, but the students just go. And they go like students, and they'll have a bad week, and then they try to make up for it the next week, and everybody knows what that's like in game development. You just can't do it. You can't stuff it all into a weekend. So what we've been working on, because uh, I run the, the core production class with the large-scale uh, games, is we have a uh, faculty for each discipline. So our producing faculty now has weekly meetings with the producers. But honestly, the way we manage student stress, which got very intense at the end of last year, because uh, there were some issues at school that were very difficult. Uh, really, was it just go at how are you running your productions? Because w we can't, there's a lot of other issues that kids have these days, but we're here to make games, and the way we've done it is absolutely uh, working on process. Are we there? No, but it's gotten a lot better this year. For instance, we're moving into a new facility next year where all of our production's gonna be, and someone said, well, security is only good till 2 a.m., and I said, good, that's it. 2 a.m. we shut the building because we don't, they don't need to work all night, right? And, and it's really important to foster those healthy kind of expectations in a workflow process. Yeah, but let's not kid, kid each other, right? Making games is crazy hard and sometimes you have to crunch, sometimes. What is bad are extended crunches. That's where the real toxicity is. But everybody has to cram for that test. I mean, we do it in every business we're in. We were talking about, you got a deadline, you may be up really late. But we just can't have it as a routine or an expectation or people feeling that it's healthy. Because the students, at least our students work really hard and they all want to do too much. 
Yeah, and, and there's a certain level of compensation that you have to kind of consider and, and make sure those things are balanced. It's the same in the media world as it would be in many industries as we were talking about as well. But you're really focused on time management and teaching and in your curriculum like those Right, and, and one thing I, I noticed when I was listening to, to Ian talk about passion, I mean, nobody at our, not, not one student at our school is in the games program to get rich. No, I, I, there's not. I, they don't talk about that. I mean, we have business classes and marketing classes and how to get their games played by consumers. But people may go to other schools at USC if they're looking for money. I, our students come because they love games, I, just like us. That's why we teach it, because we love games. But that's something I was thinking about when Ian was talking about the Walking Dead team and how they all stayed with it. I do love that about the game business and even, even in my years in the industry with teams, it was never about I'm going to get rich. It was just I want to make a great game. And, and I think that's what our culture is like there for sure. But along with that and high performance people who are used to getting straight A's, which is a whole other thing because SC is now like a 4.0 school, um, high, trying to make games, high performance people only understanding A's till they got to game development, it, it's, a, it's a bad, bad combo. The trifecta of um, really good qualities. Trifecta can, of stress. Yes, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, we just, we have a really high performance team right now. And I really think they've been doing a beautiful job, but we had beta last Thursday and there were just progression blocks. And we had to tell them they didn't pass and they are so high performance. I mean, I think they've been up for like 72 hours and we can't stop them, right? Because they're so, it, that's about them though. We don't encourage that. But that's what our students are like because they love games. Well, unfortunately, we're uh, just about wrapped for time. Uh, I feel like we could the talk about this. The next speaker must be really good <laughs> because this place got filled up. <laughs> Surely it was for you, I imagine. Well, I'm looking forward to the next generation of game developers. Thank you very much. So are we. Yeah.